Hello, beer tubers, and welcome to another beer review with me, Peter, the master of puppets. Today, drinking more Czech lager, Czech Pilsner, or Svetli Lechak, to be precise. This one is from Metaphor. So, this is quite special because you can't really buy Metaphor beers that easily. But Jiri from Metaphor and Andre, my, one of my subscribers, Glorifier on Instagram, uh, was kind enough to surprise me with a pack of Metaphor beers, which was amazing. So I got, they know, I, at least Andre knows, uh, that I love lager. And I've had a huge, like, renaissance with lager and really been trying a lot of great Czech lagers and reviewed a lot. And uh, Metaphor is known for wild ales, but they also do, or Jiri also makes lagers. It's a small nano brewery. You might know them if you're into the whole geeky side of craft. And um, they're from Prague. And uh, yeah, Jiri, who, who does this nano brewing project, makes loads of wild ales. And lots of them are focused on big drinkability, sessionability. And he also makes a lot of lagers. Uh, or at least he's made a few. I think it's mostly wild ale so far. I've been lucky enough to try Metaphor at NBCC. And I had a bottle last year on my trip to Amsterdam. Because there was uh, at uh, Hit Lagerhoofs, they had bottles of Metaphor. But there was a surprise package in the mail with a six pack of Metaphor lagers and a magnum of pebbles, which is, I think it's, it was like a grisette or something like that which was mind boggling because it's stuff you can't really get otherwise. So thanks a ton to Jiri and, uh, and Andre. It was a paternity present or just like a congratulations uh, with the twins. So thanks a ton. The girls, of course, aren't old enough to drink. So the missus and me are gonna love this. Um, but yeah, we've got this one today, this lager here, the Svetli Lechak called Those Who Dance. Or as it's called in full here on the label, those who dance are considered mad by those who can't hear the music. And this really reminds me of, uh, what is it called? The kernel, actually, with the labels, with the stamp on there and the, like this paper label with the, with the lines. Like if you've ever had a bottle of kernel beer from England, from London, you'll recognize this a little, there's a little bit of similarity. But uh, yeah, this is really cool. It's a 5.3% Svetli Lechak or Pale Lager or Czech Pilsner. And it's made with all organic ingredients. So this is really cool. So this has got a message from Jiri, which I want to read aloud because it's really good. So it says this, and also, by the way, speaking of message, they even sent me the coolest card, which said like, congrats with the, the twins and everything, which was awesome. So thank you some guys. But here, let's see. It says, this is my quest for a dream everyday lager beer with a touch of magic, deeply rooted in Czech brewing traditions and the local environment around us. A little nod to the olden days when time had a different meaning. This humble yet charming beer was brewed with only organic local ingredients and a very generous amount of raw spelt, then lagered to perfection for over a season. It's a beer that I am proud to share with you, one that gently exudes a portrait of a local terroir with a sprinkling of magic for those who can hear it. Nazdravi Jiri. So, serve at 7 degrees, 5.3%. So, only like organic ingredients trying to do local it's really cool and it makes sense especially with the czech republic and all because there's a lot of brewers there embracing the local uh, you know uh, grains and hops and like saz hops for example or some of the many other various slatic whatever there's so many different uh, czech hop varieties and also check different types of czech malts so you can of course there make a beer that's really deeply rooted in everything czech it's also really awesome that this was lagered for a whole season um you know a lot of lager really just shines with the lagering time. So that's really cool. But let's check it out. 5.3%, as I said, looks great. So pour is a nice, slightly hazy golden yellow color. I guess the haze must be due to the use of uh, the spelt in here. Because um, lagering for this long, you know, I think it will produce a clearer beer. There's also a touch of organic rye in it. Cool. So like quite a different grain profile than, say, classic uh, Pilsner beer, which is usually just like Pilsner malts and and uh, water, hops and yeast. But yeah, great looking beer. It had a very nice frothy white head. It's a very nice pale golden yellow color. It looks a sl slightly more like copper-ish on the camera, uh, but it's like straw golden yellow. It looks so refreshing. Let's check out the aroma and thanks a ton to Andre and Yuri for the beers. Oh, that smells really nice, really, really clean. Like you can really smell this is a beer that's been lagered for a very long time. 
really well balanced uh, grain profile and hop profile. Like there is a lot of like rustic grains to this one. Uh, you don't totally smell, smell like the spelt and rye playing in with like a rustic vibrancy, like rustic graininess. Maybe not so much spicy rye, maybe a touch, but like it just brings forth a more like, yeah, almost, I, I don't want to say farmhousey because farmhouse beer is, you know, quite different than lager beer, but it has like the rustic feel of a farmhouse beer, but the grist aspect of it, which is really nice. I'm getting a touch of honey to it as well, like a honey malt sweetness, floral nuances, grassy nuances. Like it's really well balanced between hoppy nuances and, um, and malty nuances. Let's give it a taste. Cheers. And thanks a ton again to Jiri and Andre for the beers. <laughs> what a surprise. <laughs> Burst of hops on the palate. Wow. I did not expect that from the aroma because it smelled much more malty. Really substantial hop character, this. Oh, that's really nice. High bitterness, too. We're really like. It feels like 35 to 40 IBUs or something. I don't know, it doesn't say, but it could be just a combination of also like sp the spiciness of rye, bitter, peppery, spicy hop flavors and dryness because it's also dry. And it's like, right? Like the carbonation is pretty cool because it's like, it's not like heavily carbonated, but it feels effervescent and it's right on the edge where like if it, it had much more carbonation, it wouldn't feel as fluffy as it does right now because it has a really fluffy, like airy, cloudy, so to speak, mouthfeel. This is really my kind of Pilsner because it's so hop forward. There's so much hop quality to this. And I think like for me, like I've always been like that. Like I'm, I'm uh, deep in my heart. I'm a hop head. I love hops. I love maltier like bloggers as well. But when it comes to a, a beer style that can showcase hops this well as a pilsner. This is just it, like super vibrant hop character. It's really grassy and like citric up front. And then the aftertaste is really peppery, like chewing on black and white peppercorns and drying and bitter, like an herbal too, like fresh herbs, almost like, like bitter uh, minty nuances or something like that. There's an interesting, maybe not mint, but it has like a, a bitter herby bite on the back. Oh, I'm just trying to think of herbs now. Maybe to some extent Thai basil or something like that. It can have a slight soapy bitter bite on the end. I, I think there's a little bit of that, but it's soft. It's not like crazy like soapy or anything, uh, but it, it's really good. So in terms of grade, yeah, really close to world class. Um, not exactly world class. I think I prefer a little bit more of a fruity hop profile myself. Uh, again, I don't, I don't know what hops are in here, but I imagine Saz could be one of them. I'm actually not that well versed with Czech hops, um, but I always keep referencing Mittelfuy and Saphir hops when I talk about hops that I love in Pilsners. But I love how this has like some subtle kind of fruity nuances up front and then all that spicy intensity in the back. It, it, it really tastes awesome. But I think it could do with a little bit more fruitiness for my personal preference to balance some of the spice. But it's fucking awesome. I'm so stoked I got a six pack of this because <laughs> this is going down like milk. It's really good. Mm. Like I think one of my favorite Czech Pilsners is Vinogatsky Pio of our uh, 11. That's also like a very hot forward bitter Pilsner. And these are also very different if you think classic Czech Pilsners as well. There's no diacetyl sweet buttery flavors in these. This is dry hot forward bitter beer, which is awesome. Um, but yeah, I think actually, I haven't had a can of that in a long time, but it could be a good comparison to the 11 because that's also more dry, more bitter. Um, I don't know which one I'd like the most though of these two. I have a spare can of actually Minowatsky 11 and I have five more cans of this. So maybe I could try and do it side by side. It might be on my own, but it's, it's in that league. It's in that ballpark. I think it's close to world-class, but I think for me to love it even more, just a tad more fruitiness, tad more. But otherwise, this is fucking great lager. I'd be so stoked if I brewed this. Hats off, Jiri. This is great. My first lager from you, and it's damn good. There's like no off flavors, no nothing. It's really bold. It's really flavorful. 
and also somewhat balanced still, even though it's fairly bitter and rustic and got some edges. But I like that. I like some edge on lagers. It shouldn't be all soft and dainty, I think. Uh, so yeah, in terms of grade, like a 93, I think. This is just a really nice lager beer. I mean, a testament to how good it is, is the fact that I've almost drunk the entire can in the review, <laughs> and that never happens. So if you have a chance to try some Metaphor, and you get the chance to try Those Who Dance or any of other, the other Metaphor beers, you should definitely do so. They are fantastic. An awesome nano brewery to keep your eyes on. So if you had a chance to try Those Who Dance, let me know what you thought of it. Thanks a ton to Jiri and Andre for the beers. You guys are awesome. And again, I'm, this is 100% honest. I'm not saying these kind of words just because they sent me a boatload of beer as a present because I had kids. <laughs> I'm always honest. I even, you know, as I said, there's some things I like different, but that's just a personal preference. Some people might think this is world class, you know. That's how it is. Palettes are different. But it's certainly a really extremely well-brewed lager beer that you should drink if you can. So if you guys had it, let me know. As always, remember to comment, subscribe, check out the Facebook fan page and Twitter and Instagram and all that social media stuff. Che give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and ring the bell for future notifications about videos. And I'm going to say cheers. It's been a while since I did a video. <laughs> and see you guys in another beer review.